Alivo. I sincerely welcome everyone to Sri Radha Gopinath Temple. Thank you for being here. Today, we will hear from His Holiness Bhakti Samrita Maharaj, His Holiness Sukadev Swami Maharaj, and I will also say something. Goranga Prabhu has selected the topic, but he has not told me what it is. Appreciating Vaishnav compassion. <laughs> I'll begin by appreciating your Vaishnav compassion, <laughs> giving us such a good topic. So we will begin with Bhakti Rasamrita Maharaj speaking. Let us welcome him back to Sri Radha Gopinath Temple. Many years, Maharaj was, he was an executive manager in a big bank. And then when he was at the peak of his ever increasing promotional promotions in his career, he came to be a brahmachari at Radha Gopinath. And he became the, he was the temple president for many years here. And he did so much incredibly wonderful le lecturing some of the people that he discovered as students and watered the seed and brought them to the point of surrendering their lives to Krishna, our Goranga Prabhu and Radhe Sham Prabhu, among so many others. And he was the temple president of Belgaum and regional secretary of Karnataka. And then from that point, by the incredibly enthusiastic persuasion of leaders of India, he became the temple president of Krishna Balaram Temple in Vrindavan for several years. Did incredible services there. And now he's traveling. He goes very prominent in London and the UK and still Belgium and Europe. Australia too you went, yes? He's traveling all over the all over the universe. <laughs> especially empowered by Narada Muni. <laughs> and known for his incredible scholarship, not only eloquent in his speaking, but he brings people's hearts right to the essence and his good character and humility and invasion of culture. Of, he has very much enchanted the hearts of devotees all over the world. And we are so honored and grateful, Maharaj, that you are with us today. Let us once again welcome him very loudly and enthusiastically. And we also have His Holiness Sukadev Swami Maharaj. He used to just take buses and trains and go to colleges around Bombay back in the 80s. And brought so many people to the path of bhakti. Known for his renunciation. He's a doctor. He was a medical doctor, believe it or not. <laughs> Uh, 
And he was, he sacrificed so much to come to the path of bhakti and became a brahmachari and started treating people's spiritual illnesses. Extremely influential in how he impacts people's lives. He established Krishna consciousness in a beautiful way in Kurukshetra. He was a pillar of preaching here in Mumbai in the very early days. And he also is now in Nellore in Andhra Pradesh, yes? And there he's established a beautiful temple and congregation. And he's very deeply loved wherever he goes for his humility, his capturing the essence of Krishna consciousness, his very uniquely ecstatic kirtans, and as I said, his renunciation. And and we're so honored, Maharaj, that you have come here to be with us. Wherever he goes, people just deeply trust him because they see he's so, he's wise, childlike, and empowered. Let us welcome very enthusiastically and loudly Shukadev Bhavad. Grace Goranga Prabhu has given us this topic, <laughs> but you can speak on anything you like. <laughs> I have to say that because that's usually what I do. <laughs> Jnanatimirandhasya, Jnananjana Shalakaya, Chakshuram Militam Yena Tasmaya Shri Purave Namaha. Shri Chaitanya Manovishnam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale, Svayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Svapadantikam, Vandeham Shri Guruha Shri Yutapadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnabamscha, Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitam Shcha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Niti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavane Pyo Vaishnave Pyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. So yes, I have to see His Holiness Radhanath Swami's mercy in the sudden call for both of us to come and give class here. We were not expecting and we were hoping we would be able to hear. But the topic is very interesting, appreciating Vaishnava compassion. It's sometimes hard to appreciate Vaishnava compassion because there is too much passion. <laughs> In Hindi, the word kam means less. So when there is less passion, then we can appreciate compassion also. <laughs> we see this in the lives of the two sons of Kuver, Nalakuvar and Mani Grieve. They were engaged in acts of passion and ignorance. 
they were intoxicated, they were not clothed, and they were in the company of many ladies and they were sporting near a body of water. And just at that time, by the arrangement of the Lord, the great devotee Narad Muni happened to walk by. The ladies became ashamed and tried to cover themselves up and be decent at least in front of a sadhu like Narada Muni. But these two brothers, the sons of Nalakuvar and Manigriv, uh, the sons of Kuvera, they were completely oblivious of the presence of Narada Muni and continued on with their activities. Narada Muni saw this and began to reflect on their condition. And he felt that these two were so intoxicated by pride, born out of their opulence and their beauty and so on, that this was indeed their greatest enemy. So he felt that he had to relieve them of this pride, this arrogance, of their own opulence and so on. In Sanskrit, the word pride is called mother, which also means intoxicating. There is matta, there is pramatta, and there is unmatta, different degrees. There is illusion, there is <coughs> intoxication, there is madness. And they are all different degrees of the same thing. So, when one becomes illusioned by proprietorship and enjoyership in this world, then one becomes mad. Nunam pramattaha kurute vikarma yad indriya priyataya apranoti. As Rishabdev Maharaj says, one should not become addicted to the madness of this world because that causes us to forget reality. We are put into a state of illusion. And then there, there is no question of us working for our own welfare. So these two sons of Kovera, having been completely under the influence of illusion because of their opulence, were unable to perceive the great mercy that had come in their lives in the form of the association of Narad Muni. So Narad Muni very kindly proceeded to curse them, to relieve them of this pride. Now, a curse is generally a word that has a negative connotation. We always think of a curse as being harmful, dangerous, and so on. But when a great devotee like Narad Muni offers a curse, then it's actually a benediction. In other words, he offered his mercy to them. Out of his compassion, he cursed them to become trees. And when they became a little repentant, he explained they were they had to wait for a long, long time, for many years. But each day they became trees, they became trees in the courtyard of Maharaj Nanda in Vrindavan. So what a great fortune it is to become trees in the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj, where Krishna crawled and played. <coughs> Shrutim apare, Shritim smritim itare, Bharatam anye, Bhajantu bhi, Bhava Bhajantu bhi taha, Aham ihanandam vande, Krishna nande, Param Brahma. The shloka goes that I think this is Raghupati Upadhyay who prays that there are some people who worship the Upanishads, some worship the Puranas, some worship the Mahabharat and so on. But they do so, bhajantu bhava bhitaha, because out of fear of this material existence. But as far as I need to worship 
all these other things. I simply want Yasya uh, Linde Param Brahma. The Param Brahma Supreme Lord Krishna crawled like an ordinary child. So the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj is such a worshipable place because the Supreme Lord crawled there. Who can imagine the Supreme Lord who is the source of all power, the source of everything, the ultimate absolute truth, who can move faster than the speed of the mind, who is all-knowing, that he's crawling anywhere. So such is the extraordinary nature of the pastimes of the Supreme Lord, especially in Vindavan. So Nalakuvar and Manigri, first of all, became trees in that courtyard. So how fortunate they were. They had to wait for a long time. But such a wait is not fruitless. And given the time span of eternity, it is just a flashing speck of time. Very soon, Lord Krishna appeared there and he performed his most wonderful Damodar Leela. And then he pulled the grinding mortar between these two trees. They had become Arjuna trees. They called Yamala Arjuna trees, the twin trees. And he pulled them down and released Nalakuvar and Manigriva from the bodies of trees. They emerged with their golden forms and having been blessed to understand their good fortune now, they offered their obeisances to Krishna. They glorified him. And they appreciated now their great fortune in having been cursed by Narad Muni. Now the understanding had dawned upon them. They, were, they asked only for prema bhakti. And Satyavrat Muni therefore also asked, Tatha prema bhaktim svakam me prayacha. He said, you gave kuvira atma jao bhakti baddheva murti, murti, baddha murti, you were a baddha murti, O Krishna. You had been tied to the grinding mortar. And to these two brothers of, of, uh, to Kuvera, um, of sons of Kuvera, you bless them with Prema Bhakti. So I also want that Prema Bhakti. I don't want anything else from you. So such was their fortune that Narad Muni cursed them. And what did they get in return? They got Prema Bhakti. Personally awarded by Krishna, who came in front of them face to face. Otherwise, normally, a curse would be something very terrible. For example, we hear of the curse of Durvasa Muni, or we hear of other curses in this world. But the curse of a great devotee like Narad Muni is actually an exhibition of the extreme compassion that he felt for the degraded condition of the, these two people. What is our greatest enemy? What is the most harmful thing in our life? The answer is that which keeps us away from love of Godhead. And that which keeps us away from Krishna. And if that thing that keeps us away from Krishna is pride and illusion and so on, then any so-called curse that destroys that is actually the greatest blessing for us. As Kunti Maharani also says, Janmaishwarya Shruta Shribir Edhamana Madhapuman Naivar Hatya Vidhatum Vai Tvamakinchana Gochara My dear Krishna, when someone has this fourfold opulence or even one of these four things, Janma, high birth, Aishwarya, lot of wealth, Shruti, high learning, Shri, beauty, one becomes intoxicated. Edhamana, Madha Puman. Again, the same word comes in, Madha. Some, a person who has these four, 
so-called desirable objects of this world, he becomes intoxicated with pride. Naivarhatya vidhatum vaitvam akinchana gochara Therefore, he cannot approach you in a proper spirit. He cannot approach you helplessly. Unless one approaches the Supreme Lord in a spirit of helplessness, one cannot achieve the mercy of Krishna. So long as one takes shelter of these four things, high birth, beauty, intelligence and learning, and so on, one will not be able to cry out helplessly. One will think one has the qualifications to manage one's own, one's own affairs. So Queen Kunti has made a very pertinent point. Only in Akinchana, one who is completely sold out to the Lord, so to speak, who has given up all personal plan making independent of the plans of the Lord, only such a person can actually approach Krishna with feeling. And for one who approaches Krishna with feeling, Krishna is very close by. He is easily available. So what Narad Muni did was that he removed that barrier between the two sons of Kuvera and Lord Krishna. The barrier of intoxication and pride born out of opulence, beauty, and so on. So the mercy of the great devotees like Narad Muni may sometimes, or even often, not be recognized as such. The mercy of the pure devotees is the mercy of Krishna. Brahmande Brahmite kono bhagyavan jeev guru krishne prasade pai bhakti lata bij. As Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has instructed Rupa Goswami, that some fortunate jiva soul, after wandering through many, many lifetimes within this universe, may somehow, by a great stroke of fortune, achieve the mercy of Guru and Krishna. And Srila Prabhupada explains in the purport to that that the word prasad or mercy is very important. It is by the mercy of Krishna that one gets Guru and then the Guru by his mercy shows us the way to obtain Krishna. So by mercy of Krishna we get Guru, by mercy of Guru we get Krishna. This is how the mercy works. So how does one obtain the mercy? How does the mercy come from the Guru and the Vaishnavas? It comes, Srila Prabhupada explains, by the process of instructions. When one follows the instructions, then one obtains the mercy. And in this way, one moves ahead in the path of Krishna consciousness towards ultimate perfection and fulfillment. In the course of our striving for success, many obstacles will certainly come. And we also have to train ourselves to see them as the mercy of the Lord. And these may even come through the medium of many devotees or the spiritual master. And one should see them in that light. That everything that happens in our life is by the arrangement of the Supreme Lord including the difficulties that may come. Tate no kampam susamikshamano bhunjana iradhma kritam vipavam hrigvagva purbhir vidadhan namaste jiveta yo mukti pade sadaya bhag. The jiva is entitled to the kingdom of God, but in order to receive his inheritance, so to speak, one has to be completely dedicated unconditionally to the lotus feet of the Lord, to his service. And then, if one tolerates difficulties that may come in life, thinking that they are because of our own deeds from the past, and one continues to serve with one's heart, with one's words and body, 
then eventually success will be ours. Manu, the famous lawgiver for humanity in his Manu Samhita, the Manu Smriti, talks about the Daya Bhak principle. The Daya Bhak principle is what governs the principle of inheritance in the Vedic culture. That this child inherits the fortune of the parent. So, according to the same principle, therefore, Brahma in this prayer has used the word Daya Bhag, that we are all children of the Lord and we also inherit the kingdom of God, provided we learn to see that all these so-called calamities and misfortunes that happen in our life are the mercy of the Lord and the blessings of the pure devotees of the Lord. Whenever Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was asked to give blessings, he would always say, Krishna Mati Rahu or Krishna Mati Rastu. May your Mati or your intelligence be inclined towards Krishna. In other words, may you be always Krishna conscious. That was Mahaprabhu's blessing to everyone. He would not give uh, blessings in the way that the people of this world would understand it. Chiranjivi Bhava. <laughs> May you live for a long time. Ayushman Bhava. Have a long life. No. So the real mercy, the real blessings come to us in whichever way, whether we perceive them to be um, harmful or nice, but the real blessings and mercy are those that actually remove the obstacles between us and Krishna and that help us to progress towards pure Krishna consciousness, which is the ultimate goal of life. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Timiranda Shagana and Yanathalakaya, Chakshuru Nuritam Yanathasma is Rigur and Nama, Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishnam, Stapitam Yanabutale, Sayan Rupa Kadama Yandadati Sapadantakam, Jay Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Adoita Gadadhara Srivasa, the Gora Bhaktaranda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So appreciating the Vaishnava compassion. Uh, so the compassion, the word is used uh, when a person is helped uh, in any way, materially, if you have some problem, you help him and you are compassionate on him. But uh, uh, that doesn't uh, really solve the problem, that doesn't uh, completely solve the problem. Uh, and uh, uh, no uh, material solution uh, can really solve the problem. Like uh, uh, we are in a incompatible situation, either this body or this material world. 
So, uh, real compassion can never be anything of this uh, uh, mundane world. So, appreciating Vaishnava compassion, uh, that also needs intelligence uh, to understand the compassion of a Vaishnava. Uh, generally, the Vaishnavas are not so well understood or appreciated in this world uh, because uh, their approach uh, to the problems of the world is something that an ordinary person or an average person uh, cannot comprehend how uh, what the Vaishnavas are doing uh, is actually the most uh, compassionate activity. Haribo. I remember long ago one of my god brothers he preached to me so strong I'm not going to go into details because I didn't want to take sannyas I guess I'm going into the details <laughs> I was totally against becoming a sannyasi I didn't want to get married I just wanted to be a brahmachari because brahmachari life is so nice <laughs> Married life, I just felt too unqualified for that. <laughs> that was just too of a high position for a little guy like me. <laughs> just let me be a brahmachari. And sannyas, you know, people start calling you Maharaj. <laughs> what kind of Maharaj? Great king. I just want to be a das, 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 anu, das. Just let me, just let me mind my own business and <laughs> milk some cows and do some preaching and, you know, go to some colleges and meet people and bring them to the path of bhakti as, as an instrument of Prabhupada's mercy. That's all I want to do. What is this, Maharaj? <laughs> and they were pushing and pushing the whole community. And, and this one person who was my elder, senior god brother, he was a grihasta, and he was saying, if you don't take sannyas, you are a fallen soul, and this and that, because you are disobeying the instruction and the will of the community and our leader, and he went on and on and on. <laughs> I said to him, well, why don't you take sannyas? He said, because I'm not ordered to do so, you are. <laughs> I couldn't defeat that. Because he wasn't ordered to do it, and I was. Oh, but I learned a good lesson from that. Ultimately, I did, and I'm here with all of you. So it was, a, it, it, it was like a curse to me. <laughs> But it became a blessing, because I, otherwise I may never have met any of you. And I didn't, wouldn't have the opportunity to serve you. But uh, another part of that lesson was, a few years later, this person had some marriage conflict, and he was ordered to take sannyas. <laughs> Do you like this story so far? <laughs> There's a lesson to it. And he was mortified. He was devastated. And he came to me and asked what he should do. <laughs> I 
I was beginning to learn the dynamics of how material energy and how Krishna's mercy works together. And I said to him, if you... <laughs> if we, if any of us, if we expect something to do, somebody to do what we tell them to do, then it's a matter of time till we are going to have to do the same thing. <laughs> you preach to me in a certain way, and now you're expected to do what you wanted me to do. It's a reality. Narada Muni, he cursed people out of compassion. But if we look into his background and foreground, he was one of the greatest examples of how he transformed curses upon himself into blessings. Therefore, he was really qualified to curse. to bless in that way. Anyways, this person asked me what he should do because he was really, really in trouble now. And I told him, this is a vicious cycle going on here. <laughs> you told me what I should do and now it's coming back on you so I'm not going to tell you what to do. <laughs> But if we just accept whatever comes as the Lord's mercy, we will definitely benefit. <laughs> Anyways, that, that person left our society. And as of now, over 30 years and more later, he's not come back because it was just too much. We are responsible or what we expect of others. We are responsible to live by what we teach. Yes, Narada Muni cursed Nala Kuvera and Managriva. We heard when he was just a little boy, the son of a maidservant, he's living in the jungle, associated with great Bhaktivedantas, Sadhus, for four months during Chaturmasya, he was listening to them speaking. And as a little boy, he was only about four or five, he couldn't really understand what they were saying so much. But because he served them and pleased them and took their prasad with their blessings, he was blessed by them because of the the enthusiasm he had to please them through his service. So even a little boy that age, he was able to assimilate and understand the very essence of everything they spoke. Shushu shro shadadana sya basu deva kataru ji syan mahat sevaya vipra punja tiratana sevanat. The Shriman Bhagavatam tells, Shrinbatam Sukata Krishna Punja Shravana Kirtan. By developing a taste for hearing of the Lord, the Lord within is so pleased he cleanses our heart of the anartas and reveals himself. But how do we develop that taste? By rendering service to great souls with humility and sincerity. <laughs> that was his qualification. His mother was a maidservant, and he served with sincerity to please them. He developed through the process love for them and trust in them. And whatever they spoke, it deeply penetrated their heart. And soon after that, his mother was bit by a serpent and died. He had no father, no brothers and sisters, no uncles and aunties. <laughs> <laughs> the 
there was no ladies north called Hindu's orphanage <laughs> to bring him in and give him prasad and take care of him. He was alone with nothing and no one. And he took it as a blessing. This would be considered a great curse of providence on a five-year-old child to have nothing and no one in a jungle. But by the association and the blessings of these great souls, because he was blessed by sadhus, he was able to see the most painful, impossible curse to be a blessing, a blessing of God. Now I have nothing else except to find Krishna. And that's what he did. Yasyahamanagrinami Harisheta Tanam Shanai. Shukadev Maharaj quoted this. He had nothing. But because he took it in such a positive spirit and searched and searched and searched and went deeper and deeper and deeper, in his next life he became Narada Muni, son of Brahma. He was given the Veena by Krishna. Such a benediction, traveling around. And he just wanted to do the will of the Lord. Narada Muni had no animosity, no anger for anyone. He was just doing what's good for everyone. He saw the potential. In little Prahlad, he preached to him in the womb of the mother. And he didn't preach to Prahlad to be a brahmachari, because Prahlad was meant ultimately to get married and be a king. He was a disciple of Narada Muni. And little Dhruva, Narada Muni met him in the forest and transformed the curse of Dhruva into a blessing. And Dhruva also went back and got married and became a king. So Narada Muni knew exactly what was good for everybody. He wasn't one of these like fanatical brahmacharis that everyone has to be a brahmachari. Many of his greatest disciples were kings with wives and children, but they were akinshana gotra. Because by Narada's blessing, they understood nothing is mine. Akinshana gotram doesn't mean you don't have anything physically. It means you do not have any attachments to the misconception that this is mine. Because there are people who may be avadutas or swamis who have no possessions, no bank account, no property, no family, but they may be attached to their knowledge or maybe they may be attached to their renunciation. The renunciation of everything could make them feel that I'm better than somebody who's not so renounced. That means they're, th they're thinking in terms of I and mine. A kinshina gotra means we don't claim anything to be our own. Our intelligence, our knowledge, our fame, our popularity, our wealth, our position, this body, this anything. It all belongs to Krishna, Sarva Loka Maheshwaram. Everything is Krishna's property. I'm just a servant, an instrument. That is a Kinshina Gotra, no attachment. We often quote Srila Prabhupada when a devotee, a relatively new devotee, in those days, even the senior most devotees of ISKCON back in the 60s and 70s was a relatively new devotee. 